welcome Ben Cole from ERP <clears throat> Connect Consulting as our next speaker in the B Business Central Workshop. So we're excited to have you kick off session or session number two today. So thank you. Awesome. I'm excited as well. And honestly, uh, it's going to be tough to follow up from Cynthia there, oh, right? There's so much good <laughs> content. I, I was writing down notes here on my little note card as you're talking, because there were about six different things you said that I might be going deeper into in terms of demoing or just kind of wanted to reiterate. But the first one, I would absolutely agree in terms of the process improvement. One of the things that you called out was doing a health check. And we actually have an app that will do that. And it's our only free app that we have. Um, so would highly recommend folks um, check that out. And we'll be talking about that today. But so that's without, a DIY tool, right? That's that's a DIY tool. Again, you we have people do it both ways, plug it in, DIY it, or their partner will help them walk through it, right? Because sometimes people are also downloading these things, and they still might not know uh, what to do next, right? So you can take it either way. But a lot of people do use it as a DIY tool. So Without further ado, thank you for the introduction as well. Uh, as Amy mentioned, my name is Ben Cole. I'm the president here at ERP Connect, and we're a business central ISV that focuses on productivity, automation, and dashboarding solutions for business central. Currently, we have about 30 different apps that are on App Source, 32 to be exact, um, but that health check is right here down in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, that is our only free app. And again, if you're looking to play around with something, I think one of the biggest benefits of a tool like Health Check for us from what we've built is subledger to general ledger reconciliation. So if you just wanted to start with one little thing that takes maybe five minutes to check and has a very high impact on your business, we'll be going through a matrix that talks about impact and effort today, but that's a very high impact, low effort uh, activity that you can do. I've got some other examples up here on the screen, but again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on any of our apps, but today should hopefully be more educational in general um, on kind of how to maximize your investment with that just being one piece of it. So agenda for today quickly here. Uh, first, we're going to go over some learning objectives, kind of what you can expect to get in today's session. Second is our actionable items. So things you can actually do today or tomorrow, or this week or next week to start optimizing Business Central and kind of the realms of change logs, AP automation, AR automation. And we're actually gonna dive into Business Central and show you how to do some of these things in case you'd like to do those um, yourself after the session. Uh, we're gonna talk about what I call the digital transformation, holy trinity. I hate buzzwords, but digital transformation is probably the best way to describe this. What you're gonna need to be successful, the main three things in order to achieve any technology project. We're gonna jump into that live demo I talked about. And then what are the next steps? What can you do? What can you share with your team to be successful? Some resources that you can use to be successful. And then I put Q&A in here at the end. I'm a believer of ask your questions as we go through. I'll try to answer them um, kind of as we go, just because then it helps kind of stay on topic and ask the questions when they're actually being talked about. So with that, learning objectives. This is kind of the why behind everything. Why are we here today, right? We're here to help you optimize Business Central and get the most out of your investment. How are we going to do that? One, we're going to walk you through better ways to track changes in the system. My two favorite ways are change logs and field monitoring, not only to show you what's changed in the past from a change log perspective, but proactively get notified when things change with field monitoring. So we'll talk about the differences there. Then we're gonna jump into various techniques and teach you how to automate your quote to cash process. This is gonna include an AR dashboard that's intuitive and friendly, right? Clicking into things, seeing your customer balances. We're gonna talk about invoice automation. We're gonna talk about prepayment tips and tricks. And we're gonna be talking about applying cash to invoices and payment portals. So again, a lot of those things Cynthia talked about, we're gonna be showing you live in action. Uh, and then finally, on the other side of the house, we're gonna be talking about accounts payable, right? We're gonna be talking about vendors. We're gonna be talking about dashboarding vendor management, document storage, payment remittances, um, and how to resend and pay vendors uh, directly out of Business Central. So that's what you signed up for. Please uh, strap in and we're going to be talking for the next 45 or 50 minutes or so on these topics. So actionable items. want to dive a little bit deeper on what we're going to be talking about today. I mentioned change logs and field monitoring, right? What's the difference? How can we use these to improve our business operations? And what should you be tracking? And what maybe should you not be tracking, right? If you have to hop off the presentation, the one thing I'll leave you with is don't track everything. It's going to bog your system down and it's going to be impossible for you to get value out of what you're tracking, right? Make sure you have a plan together and you know what you want to track. We're going to go through a customer's address today and a vendor's bank account uh, routing and account number. So we'll be talking about those. Uh, 
automation from quote to cash. We're going to be talking about emailing invoices, how you can use invoice and statement delivery to automate the sending of invoices, credit memos, statements, do recurring invoices. We're going to be talking about some different ISVs outside of us uh, that can help you do customer portals, payment links, automatic reconciliation, applying that cash, right? Um, on a vendor side, we're going to be talking about how to automatically process vendor invoices, right? There's a couple other great ISVs out there that can help you with this, how we can pay those vendors directly out of Business Central. And then finally, how to calculate ROI. This is a big thing that was talked about in that first session. And I actually have, um, for one of our tools, a calculator that we've built, right? This is just going to be an example, but you can also make your own, right? You can do it on pen and paper, you can do it in Excel, but I'll show you a framework of how to do that. And then the final piece, as we go through the presentation and analyze these things, how should you analyze them, right? I have this impact effort matrix up top, and this gives you four quadrants based on the level of effort and the impact, right? The first things you're always going to want to focus on are the high impact, low effort activities, right? These are going to be your quickest turnarounds, your quickest time to values, and typically the easiest to implement, right? These are going to get you some quick wins. And like Cynthia said, in the bigger projects and the bigger schema thing, you need those quick wins in order to get buy-in from the rest of the team, right? It's like if you're playing sports, right? The first team to score usually has the momentum. You get that quick win right away. You're going to have a lot of momentum going into that project as you continue to go forward, right? Um, the rest of these are obviously up to your discretion. Uh, I wouldn't uh, typically recommend doing high effort, low impact tasks um, at all, right? Because typically you're going to be getting more low effort, high impact. And then in terms of the other two, in terms of the fill-in jobs and the big projects, again, totally up to your discretion, but uh, that's one of the things that we're going to look at. Now, I'm going to be jumping back and forth, but before I jump to my next slide, I actually want to talk about that ROI calculator, right? So this is something we've built and I would highly recommend doing something uh, internally as you're evaluating projects, right? Because I think the opportunity cost of a lot of these things may or may not make sense, right? A lot of times they do, but there's times that they won't. And in the prior presentation, this was talked about as well, right? Internal resources aren't free, right? If I'm taking someone's time who can go charge two, $300 an hour, right? And I'm putting them on an internal task, you might be able to hire somebody for less than that. You might be able to hire a contractor. Typically a consulting firm won't be cheaper, but you might be able to find a really good contractor who can do it for much cheaper, right? And the ROI just might not be there. So we've created this simple AR uh, and collections calculator for our invoice and statement delivery tool, right? How much is your time worth? How many invoices do you send a week? Payment reminders, statements, how long is it taking? And you can come down here and literally calculate your savings and it will tell you, obviously there's some more baked in costs in year one based on some of the setup and the subscription charges, but you can accurately see your savings here, right? That's not that much savings in a year. So maybe you do it, maybe you don't, right? But if your time's worth $150 an hour and you're sending hundred invoices a day, or sorry, a week, and maybe 40 reminders and 30 statements, right? And those are all taken two or three minutes. You can now see how much time it's taking you to do those things. And if we recalculate this, well, now that's a no brainer, right? You're saving 34, 35, $36,000 a year by buying a $1,200 tool. These are the types of things that you need to be analyzing as you're going through your decisions, whether it be out of box tools, ISV tools, really anything um, kind of under the realm of that process improvement piece. So I'm gonna jump back to the PowerPoint, like two more slides, and then we'll jump into the live demo of Business Central. All right, so before we jump into our demo, this is that last thing I was talking about, right? We've talked about the technology and kind of what you need to do, but how are you going to do that, right? There's three things that you need to evaluate and look at on any technology project that you're doing. You need to look at the people involved, the processes that are being taken, and the technology that you're using, right? And I always like to say, you have to have all three to succeed, right? You can see the different quadrants here. If you have the people and the process, sure, you can scale, but you don't have the technology to automate or innovate, right? Your competitors are going to beat you on speed and the ability to pivot because your processes are still going to be very manual with, you know, even if you have the best people and the best processes, you don't have the technology to scale, right? With people and technology and no processes, you can't innovate as much, right? Uh, you don't have those processes in place to automate or scale. And these bad processes in a technology solution can compound over time, right? How many projects have you had where nobody's evaluating what's being done and there's no standards and no directions and that person goes on vacation, everything falls apart, right? By having the process, it's gonna help your people perform stronger and it's gonna help get more value out of the technology that you've already probably paid a lot of money for. 
And then the final piece, of course, if you have the processes and technology, but no people uh, that you know are worth their weight, sure, you can automate, but you don't have the people to scale. You don't have the thinkers, right? You don't have the thinkers to ask, how can we continuously make this better? And that was actually one of my answers to Cynthia's <laughs> question. I think it was her first poll question, right? What do you do in order to, to do this? I'm always thinking, how can we make this better, right? There's a funny uh, uh, anecdote from, from Steve Jobs when they made the first... Uh, uh, iPod, right? He didn't think it was small enough. And they said, we can't make it any smaller. And he dropped it in a fish tank and air bubbles started coming up. And he said, there's air in there. It can be smaller, right? A little bit extreme, but there's always better ways to do things. There's always a way to uh, continuously do those processes. So throughout this entire presentation, I want everybody to keep those two things in mind, right? The impact effort matrix and the holy trinity of digital transformation, which is the people, the processes, and the technology. The good news is you're already likely using Business Central if you're on this presentation. So you're a step in the right direction, but we're gonna talk about even more things uh, today that you can go through. So this is just uh, for fun, but we're gonna go probably really fast through this demo. So, you know, like Ricky Bobby said, if you ain't first, you're last. So we're gonna go pretty fast through this presentation and we're gonna start with those change logs and field monitoring. So I'm gonna flip between PowerPoint and then actually show you how to do this in Business Central. We've already talked a little bit about this, but change logs are gonna be better for general types of tracking, right? You wanna track it, you wanna look at it later and see what changed. Pretty basic stuff, pretty easy to set up. Field monitoring is gonna be better for getting notified, right? If you have the field monitoring turned on, which I'll show you here in a second, it is going to email you immediately as a change is made on a field that you have tracked. One of the important things here is you cannot have them turned on at the same time. So if you have customer fields being tracked in change logs, you cannot have those uh, also being tracked in field monitoring. Don't know if they're working on changing that at all, but right now that's how it currently works. So I'm gonna go through two examples. We're gonna be talking about changing a field on a customer uh, card here. And we're gonna be talking about doing a field monitoring change on a vendor bank account, right? From an address standpoint, probably not a lot of risk if somebody's changing an address, maybe there's risk and you wanna track it, feel free to do the field monitoring there. But if a vendor's bank account or routing number is changing, that is typically a red flag that I want an admin to be notified about. So without further ado, let's jump into Business Central here. We already showed that. So job cues, let's come back out into our demo. So the first thing, let's go to the change logs. Just search for it up in your search here. And under the setup, the first thing, if you've never been in here, you'll want to turn it on. If you have this turned on, this just simply means that change logs are enabled. The next step would be to go to the setup and the tables and actually pick the uh, tables and the fields that you would like to track, right? So I don't know why it always jumps me down to the 999 range, but that's okay. We'll sort lowest to highest. And you can see I'm tracking customer and items and I'm doing uh, log insertions and modifications. I'm not tracking deletions, but you could do that as well. And if I click here, the three options are blank, it's not gonna do anything. Some fields, which is my recommendation, it's now gonna allow you to tell the system the fields that you want to track. And then all fields, which I wouldn't recommend, it's literally going to track every field on the customer card. Last time I checked, I think there were like 180 fields. So I don't think you need all of those to be tracked, but again, to each their own, I'm gonna do some fields for today. And if I click into this dot, 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 it's gonna even more granularly give me options, right? So I'm tracking insertions on the name two field and I'm tracking insertions and modifications on the address field. Now, what's that gonna do? Anytime I change the address field or create a new record and put an address in there, it's going to track it in the change log tables. Now that's not going to email me because that's part of field monitoring, which we'll get into here in a second. All right, so that's how to set up change logs very quickly. Again, a very low effort, and I'll say maybe medium impact uh, activity here if we look at our matrix. And if you want to look at the field monitoring, here you can see, hey, some tables are hidden because they contain fields that are being monitored for changes. What I said in the PowerPoint, exactly that. You can't do both at the same time, right? So if I open the field monitoring worksheet, and of course you can also search for this um, up in the search up top here, this is going to give me the um, fields that I'm tracking, right? So if I go vendor bank account, I'm gonna track the account number and the transit number here. All right, so we can look at those things in our demo. And you can track other customer fields. So you could have some fields being change logged on customers and some being uh, field monitored, just to call that out as well, because there were some customer fields in my field monitoring, but they're different than what we have here. So 
after it's been set up, you can now come out to your customer. I think I created one specifically for our demo today. So we'll use this one, it's uh, 8,600. And what field did I say? Address, all right. So we'll come down here and we'll change the address field, right? Maybe somebody changes the suite number or something like that. And after I change the address, if I come down here, I can see what time it was changed, 11.47 a.m. of Central Time, who changed it. I can see what field was changed. I can see the old value, right? Because how many times have you asked that? Well, it's Suite 500 now. What did it used to be? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, can we track it? Well, we don't have change logs turned on. Okay, well, then you can't, right? Uh, but if you have change logs turned on, this is a good scenario where you can now answer those questions, right? Somebody says, hey, I think somebody updated this. Okay, not a huge deal. We want to change it back. But what are the old values to be? Well, I don't know. Well, now you know because you have the change logs turned on, right? Um, again, I could change that to literally anything. Maybe I just completely change it altogether and I go 5432 uh, Main Street Apartment 4. I don't know, right? You can, you can change this and it's going to continuously track that. Let's sort high to low again so we can get our values there, okay. Now it changed again, 1147, 1148, then changed it again. Suite 500 to apartment four, 5432 Main Street, right? And this is just one of the places that you can look at those change logs. There's of course the full blown change log entries here, which in my opinion is a little bit overkill. Um, it's gonna show you literally every change that's ever been made and tracked, right? So it can be a little daunting. Whereas the, the page I was showing is just specifically hyper-focused for the customer you're on. Um, so again, multiple ways, as we talked about earlier, to uh, get the same results in different ways, we'll call it. Uh, but again, both ways to do that, see it from the customer card, see it from the change logs. Um, and again, kind of the goal there is to see what has changed, but I'm looking at my email right now. I don't have any emails, right? Because field monitoring is not on. However, let's go out to our vendor, right? A little bit more sensitive when we're looking at bank account information because what's kind of the, the classic counting 101 uh, example. It's somebody changes the bank account information to their bank account information and pays themselves, commits fraud, and then probably ends up going to jail, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we wanna track this in our field monitoring. I'm gonna come out here. Uh, this is for a vendor bank account. So it's not gonna be in the vendor card. You're gonna have to come up to vendors and bank accounts. And we've got Bank of America here. And let's just ever so subtly change that from 533 to 421. And now I'm going to pay myself as the vendor and cash out and maybe move down to Mexico. But uh, in the meantime, my administrator is getting an email here in a second. Let's see which inbox that's coming out to me from. All right, where are we? There we are. Give me a second. I'm going to pull this guy over. And within about... 60 seconds. It's still 9.5 at 11.50 a.m., which we can confirm there. No cheating there. Uh, you're signed up to receive emails. Okay, what email did I receive? Hey, extended securities detected a change in the vendor bank account field marked for monitoring. The old number used to be 533. Now the number's 421. Who changed it? Uh, ben changed it. We might need to go check on him. Date time, 9.5 at 11.50. Why could, why could Ben even do this, right? Maybe it's a permissions problem. Uh, you can check the effective permissions on my user uh, in order to see maybe in the future something needs to change. And you don't have to go in Business Central and search for it. You can literally click the URL and it's going to pop you into Business Central. So one thing I'll call out because we are gonna be showing some other ISV tools, including some that we've built, some that other folks have built. Everything I've shown so far is 100% free. If you're in Business Central already and you have a license, you can do all this. If you're following along right now, you could have this already implemented, right? So very low effort. And again, we'll call it medium impact, um, but I can see that right now, what changed in the field monitoring entries. We have a question, Ben. <laughs> yes, please. Can I track one field on a table and then monitor another field on the same table or is it separated by a table? Uh, it's separated by the field. So in my setup there, I had some customer fields that were also being field monitored. Good question, though. Any other questions? I think Cynthia answered this one. What is the difference with change tracking record? She said one and the same. Uh, in terms of change logs and change tracking? And I think, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, I think so. Yep. 
Yep. And then the field monitoring is going to be the, the way to get the email. So I think that's probably the easiest way to delineate. If you want the emails, use the, the field monitoring. And can you show how to set up the field monitoring? Yes, I can. So field monitoring setup right here. You can also see the monitor fields log entries in the worksheet, but we're going to go to the setup based on the question. Um, so one of the important things to call out here is who's going to get that email. Um, right now, as far as I know, Cynthia, I don't know if you know a different way to do this, but as far as I know, there's only one person who can get these currently. You can either put um, your own like administrator in there. Or you could potentially use like a shared email box so that multiple people could get it. But the notification recipient is going to be um, locked down to one person right now. And then who do you want the email to send from? This is just going off of your email accounts or email scenarios in Business Central. Um, so that's the setup to get it turned on. And you would just turn on the monitor status there. And then I don't know if you can go through it from here. Let's see. I can't. We'll talk about retention policies here in a second. So but again, if you I said that really quick. So yes, you can have multiple people get it, but it would be a shared email. It has to be so a shared one email, email right? Yeah. yeah. So you can, you can identify one person there, but if you want it to go to multiple people, make sure you put a shared email address in there. Um, and then to update the fields, you go to the monitored fields worksheet. And then here's where you can put the table number. Um, and then the field number. So again, if you're looking for something here, you don't need to memorize those numbers. You can come in here and maybe you want to monitor the sales header or the sales line changing. You could click sales line maybe. And then what field on the line do you want to track? Maybe we want to track the, I don't know, the quantity, right? I wouldn't recommend doing this, but now every time a quantity changes, your admin's going to get an email, right? Um, so that's how you'd set these up. And then one thing I didn't touch on, but I just saw here, um, retention policy. So you probably don't want to keep these things forever, right? Um, so this is totally up to you internally uh, as an organization. But you know, if something changes two years ago, do you really are you really ever going to go back and look at it, right? If something changes six months ago, are you ever going to go back and look at it, right? Um, in these entries, I've seen people's system get kind of bogged down by this uh, in the past. So determine kind of how long you want to retain that information. Maybe you have a review process that you review it once a month. So maybe two months is good for the retention policy. Again, um, no hard and fast rules there, but definitely put a retention policy in place so that entries will be automatically deleted uh, after a certain period of time. Any other questions on change logs and field monitoring? Otherwise, I'm going to jump back to the PowerPoint, wrap this up and go to our next topic. Like I said, we're going nope, to go good. fast because there's a lot of content. <laughs> All right. So let's come out here. Got too many tabs open oh, now. Oh, wait. Is there a retention policy for the change log? Yes. Yeah. So there's a retention policy for the change logs and a retention policy for the field monitoring. Um, a lot of those are going to share the same table. So the uh, field monitoring and the change logs actually both share the same table number. Um, Fun fact, so if you're doing anything or doing any reporting and you're looking for the table for both of those, it's actually gonna be the same table. I think it's 50500 or something like that. I'd have to check, probably not that important, but we'll do it when we come in here, change log entries. <clears throat> um, and if you're ever looking for any of those table numbers for any of this kind of stuff, configuration packages or to track a field, if you do control alt F1, it'll bring up this little page inspection I was thinking of the contact field. Change log entries is 405. I knew it had a five in it. That's about all I was right on. But uh, table 405, change log entries. And then if you go to the field monitoring, it's also technically change logs. So, And if you're fact, like if me you're... And, and not good at remembering uh, quick keys, you can also get to it through help and support inspect pages. It's the same thing as control alt F1. Yep. Yeah. So you could always come up to the <clears throat> little help, handy dandy question mark, help and support down here. And then I haven't done this in a while because I usually use the shortcut, but it's somewhere down here. Inspect pages and uh, data right there. We'll get you to that same thing. Or if you're coming to Summit in San Antonio, I have keyboard shortcut mouse pads that you can come pick up. That's what I use, Cynthia. I'll get you one of those. Then you can just look at it down on your. <laughs> I'll take one <laughs> then of those. You, then you don't have to remember anything. Uh, which is, you know, but after you do it a certain amount of times, you're, you're kind of forced to remember and you stop looking down. All righty. So we'll get out of there for a second and I'm going to bounce back into the PowerPoint here. We'll finish up the change logs in the field monitoring. So 
what are some of the next steps, right? We finished the live demo, uh, effort impact. We already talked about medium impact. I'll call it uh, very low effort. We saw today did it in about 10 or 15 minutes. We see a little screenshot up there on the screen as well, kind of reviewing what we did. What are the next steps? How do you take this kind of home quote unquote, uh, to your business and your clients and whoever else you're working with to do this, right? Identify the fields you want to track. We talked about two today. We talked about the address field on the customer card, which maybe that's a use case, maybe it's not. And the vendor's account and routing number. If, if you want to start on anything, I would recommend just doing that. Go to the vendor bank accounts, turn on the routing number and the account number. Those are two fields that, in my opinion, you should be getting a notification on if, if those track, uh, if those change, right? You want to track that. Um, decide if you want to track or be notified, right? Do we want to use the change logs? Do we want to use the field monitoring? Uh, what is that? ongoing fine tuning and retention management look like? Just because you're gonna set a few up today, fine tune it on an ongoing basis. Maybe revisit it every month, see what you've been tracking that no one's ever looked at. How many times has that happened, right? <laughs> it usually happens to me with a reporting standpoint. Somebody says, hey, Ben, build us this report. Okay, I build the report and then a year later, okay, how's that report? Oh, I never looked at it. Okay, well, why'd we build it, <laughs> right? Fine tuning, not only with what's working, but maybe with what isn't working and, and what you need to change. And do not turn everything on. Don't don't turn on all fields. Select the some fields and, and go from there. So that's going to about wrap us up here for change logs and field monitoring. We're about right on time, about 30 minutes left. So if there's no more questions. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when the poll questions come, but uh, feel free to pop those up at any time. Okay. I know I'll Amy's launch probably right on now that. if you'd like. <laughs> <clears throat> up to you. So all go right, for it. Let's do that. Let's okay. so we don't forget. So make sure you take the poll if you need CPE. All right, what do we got? Which features would be used to help notify your clients of their current outstanding balances? All right, little uh, future looking here. We got B and C, by the way. As it, people are saying B and C, A and B, we got almost B, A and B, B and C is what everybody's picking. Okay. I'm not allowed to vote. No, presenters, <laughs> presenters can't vote. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. If everybody's voted, are, do you read off those answers, Amy? Or do you want? We uh, have um, two people picked B, four people picked A and B, three people picked B and C. Gotcha. Well, <clears throat> I don't remember making these, but I think the oh. answers. Uh, I think the answer is A and B. Um, if I was to vote, right? How do we do it for clients? I think that's the key word there, sending this out to our customers, right? So if you're doing automated invoice reminders, right? That's gonna remind your clients about their invoices. And then if you're doing the statements with the attached invoices, both of those are accomplishing the same thing. So hopefully I got the answer to my own question right there, Amy. I'll have to go back and look at the answers. <laughs> okay. I'm 99% I'm sure that's that's the answer. I know vendors wasn't the answer because uh, it was a bit of a trick question, right? We're talking about how to get our clients uh, notified. We will be talking about how to get our vendors notified here though in a second. And that's a great transition because <clears throat> next thing we're gonna be talking about is quote to cash automation. So what does quote to cash automation look like? The first two things here, which I put that uh, kind of effort impact matrix uh, over there to the right as well. We're going to talk about AR dashboarding and auto emailing AR reports, which is very high impact and uh, very low effort. We're going to talk about automating invoices, statements, payment, uh, reminder emails, all that kind of stuff from Business Central, which relates directly to that poll question we just had. Again, very high impact, very low effort. Uh, prepayments, right? If anybody's used prepayments in Business Central, it has probably been a bit of a nightmare unless you have a very, very easy prepayment process of one prepayment per invoice and every uh, order has a prepayment, right? We're going to talk about getting more flexibility with doing prepayments at a customer level, doing multiple prepayments at an order level, changing orders after prepayments have been made and some kind of uh, nice to knows there, very high impact. We'll call this one medium effort, right? It's a little, not too intense, but a little bit more effort than the first two that we talked about. And then finally talk about pay links, customer portals, all these kind of nice to haves as you're working with your customers, getting those invoices out to your customers and uh, kind of, again, uh, reducing your transaction fees, reducing the payment friction from your clients and hopefully reducing a lot of the calls you're getting of, hey, I got this invoice, I'd like to pay it. No, let's self-serve, go out directly to our portal and let's do it, let's do it that way, right? So 
between everything we're talking about here, all are very high impact. And we're going to be talking about uh, medium to low effort, uh, we'll call it. So with that, let's jump into our quote to cash automation. I'm going to pop open Business Central again here. And the very first thing you'll see here that I have up on the screen is part of our financial dashboard. So again, I said I'd call out whether uh, these things are embedded in Business Central or not. <clears throat> this is actually a tool that we built. Um, I've always really uh, not enjoyed, to put it nicely, the out-of-box accounts receivable report that Business Central comes with. So if you go to, you know, accounts receivable aging, typically this is kind of my my show and tell. It's, you know, if you're doing a demo and trying to talk to somebody about it, it's like, would you, at, you know, you're at the eye doctor. Do you want one or two, three or four, right? This is one, uh, which isn't great. And this is two, which I say most people would typically vote for number two. Here, it's a little bit more intuitive, right? You can see everything on the screen. I can sort up and down. I can click into this 132,000. Let's click that. And it's going to show me all the entries that go into that balance, right? And now I'm directly in the customer ledger entries. I can show documents. I can apply entries. I can do all the normal things that I would do in a customer ledger entry. So very intuitive. If I want to see, hey, what's in this very small sliver down here for 31 to 60 days, I can click into that. It was like 3,000 something bucks. Yeah, that, that about ties out. Uh, you can export that to Excel, right? You can do a lot of different things. And I feel like one of the big things that people are typically weary about is the reporting in Business Central because a lot of those reports do look like what we just saw. And the alternative is let's go do a bunch of Power BI stuff, which don't get me wrong, Power BI is a great tool, but you're looking at quite a big investment, not only to build Power BI, but also to maintain it and hope that you have somebody in house that can help manage that for you on a day-to-day -day basis. I like to think of this as a great starting point, right? You want to get into the AR, maybe use Power BI later. That's an absolutely fantastic option. But just to kind of get your feet wet and get some of the basics, you can come in here, right? Accounts receivable details. Give me all my customers. Give me average paydays. It's kind of your day sales outstanding per customer, right? I can sort on that high to low. I can see who my late payers are, right? Who has an average paydays that's greater than their payment terms. All of these things are not rocket science, right? They're very simple and you've probably thought about them before, but you haven't had them at your fingertips, right? So I think one of the very first things when we look at quote to cash automation, AR automation, how to improve collections and things like that, you need to have the data at your fingertips in order to know what to do with it, right? And some of these other tools we're gonna to be talking about are hopefully touchless ways to reduce your day sales outstanding, right? Ways to get paid faster. How do you do that? Well, the customers need to know that they owe you something. A lot of times it's unfortunate. Well, fortunately for improvement, it's, it's as simple as that. Unfortunately, nobody's done it before, right? Uh, and if you're the first, you'll drastically see your day sales outstanding drop, which is fantastic, right? That's the whole goal of this. Now, you'll have to come into the system and do this. I had a job queue set up and I think it just ran here recently, but we also have the ability to get that report in your inbox on a daily basis, right? So I'm gonna <clears throat> pop this email open again. And quickly I can see that same aging, right? So my total outstanding balance at 540, I've got 483 in that uh, 21 plus, any deposits for today? Uh, this actually might've been from yesterday, it looks like. And if I open the Excel sheet, let's pull that over here. I can now see every customer. I can see the contact. I can see the balances, right? So a different way to see it, but I've got a lot of clients who will just have this automatically show up in their inbox every day at 8 a.m., every day at 5 p.m., maybe twice a day, right? But finding a better way, kind of like Cynthia talked in her presentation, finding a better way to do these things, right? Um, and that's that's one of the ways. We love getting emails. We love automating uh, and doing all that fun stuff. So Reviewing data, that's going to be a great way to go, right? Make sure you're optimizing those types of things. Everything we just showed is minimal effort, right? We're talking about 10 minutes max and very medium to high value, depending on who you are, right? If you're in the AR team, you're looking at this stuff every day, that could save you 30 minutes a day. Go back to our ROI calculator. You know, that, that, that could be worth a lot over 52 weeks a year, right? All right, so let's talk documents next. That's part one. We had four parts in our PowerPoint. That's part one. We'll go through these pretty quickly. But the next piece is prepayments. So let's look back at that customer. And I will disclaim that this is another tool that we've built. So um, 
you'd have to be using advanced prepayments in order to get this functionality, but it's going to, it's going to blow the out of box prepayments out of the water, right? So if we come down into our prepayment section here, we'll notice now that we have multiple prepayment levels, right? So you don't have to just do it on the sales order anymore. You have more flexibility and more opportunities in order to do prepayments at a greater level. We're going to do customers in this case. And what that's going to allow us to do is enable this prepayments uh, button up here on the customer card. I'm going to click that. And I have, so I've already done a prepayment for a thousand. Um, <clears throat> I've got 500 bucks of that left. So let's do another thousand. Nope, not a hundred. We're missing a zero. Auditors aren't going to like that one when we get, you know, do our review. Missing zeros are never good. So there we go, a thousand. Let's post that prepayment invoice. And um, I have a setting that's turned off right now. So uh, I'm allowed to use the prepayment funds under my current setup before the actual invoice is paid. Now, that's not as common. I would say most of the time, the remaining amount here, which is referring to the customer ledger entry has to go to zero. You have to pay that prepayment before uh, you can use the prepayment funds. Again, for a demo sake, just so I don't have to go create a bunch of cash receipts, I have that turned off. So now we'll see, I've got $1,500 on account and I can export a summary at any time as well. And you can email this to your customers automatically, stuff like that. It will show me the entire prepayment history for that client, right? Okay, I got two invoices and I've got the one application there that we saw for the 500 bucks. Running balance, 1,000, 2,000, 1,500, right? Some pretty basic stuff, but if, you know, I've got customers who have hundreds of these. I've got a customer right now in the agricultural business who they get all of their money in Q3 and Q4 for next year because all the farmers are, you know, typically um, report on a cash basis and they want to get the cash out the door before the year ends. So they, you know, their tax returns are a little bit lower in terms of their net income, right? So huge use case there. Now I've got the prepayment very easily on my customer card there. Um, we'll show this in a second, but it's automatically sending the emails to uh, as part of our invoice delivery that we're going to talk about here in a second. And now if I go create a sales order or a sales invoice, let's see what that looks like. So we should have 1500 bucks on our ISV customer that we just created. <clears throat> let's go down to ISV customer here. All right. And just whatever, it doesn't matter what item we have here. Let's do five hours for 200 bucks an hour. So we got a thousand bucks, right? But if I go post this, all I've done is post the prepayment, right? Um, nothing fancy here. Just gonna post like normal. I'm gonna say, yeah, let's show me the invoice. And now what did it do, right? It took those five hours, that thousand dollars. It took the prepayment funds, a thousand dollars. And it's going to show me, hey, customer, you got 500 bucks left, right? So it's also communicating with the customer how much money you have left. And the invoice is zero. They don't owe us anything, right? Now there's options to turn that off. You can exempt it if you don't want this like one-off invoice to use prepayment funds, or you can use partial prepayment funds and stuff like that. But that's the use case there. And what's the other big thing? If you're not doing this, but you need customer prepayments, which also has happened to many of the clients that we've done this for, they're just posting payments against the customer. And what's that doing? It's it's drastically impacting your, your AR. So your AR is going to be very understated and it's not going to give you a true reflection. What's a prepayment doing? It's putting it on an actual prepayment account so that you can report on those in two different buckets, right? You might have a million dollars of AR, but you have half a million dollars in prepayments, but they've booked to the customer ledger entries just as payments. And now your AR is all out of whack, right? It's completely backwards because you don't have those processes or controls in place. This is going to help you um, remedy that. And what I was talking about at the same exact time that happened, look at this magical email that I just got, right? I didn't click post and send. I didn't go through all the dialogue boxes that Business Central makes you go through. Uh, I didn't have to, if you're batch posting, same thing. You don't have to click through all the dialogue boxes. This is just giving me a quick email. Thanks for being a valued client. You know, here's the your customer and your invoice number. You don't owe us anything. So this is just kind of a, a nice a nice to have, maybe just a receipt. And if I open that up, you know, the ugly Business Central invoice that they give you out of box that I haven't customized in my sandbox, but professional service, funds applied, remaining amount, 
you don't owe us anything, this invoice has been paid, all is fine and dandy. Now, if they did owe you something, one of the other things I want to talk about, which is a huge area for improvement, is these payment portal. So there's a lot of different options out there. The one that I've got up on my screen is another uh, ISV that we've worked with a lot and we actually um, are using internally currently to run our business. It's called uh, PayStand, right? So what does PayStand do? You saw that link on that email right here. And again, since there's no money and this isn't a sandbox, if I click pay, it's not going to do anything, but I've got another one pulled up in a, a more realistic environment. Customers can now click that link on your invoice and pay directly on a portal, right? You can either do a one-off invoice or you can do multiple invoices, more like a statement view, and they could select all of these and pay them. And I think the beautiful thing about this is you can do bank to bank transfers, you know, vendor preferred, no fee, things like that. You can still do your ACHs. And in this case, in this demo, I also have credit cards as an option, but me as the, the company, I don't want to pay, you know, I don't want to just write off 3% of all of my revenue just because I'm accepting credit cards, right? I'm, I'm, I have the ability to put it uh, upon my customer. If they would like to pay with a credit card to get the points and have the convenience, they absolutely can, but we're going to assess that fee to them at the time of checkout, right? So we have two free options. We got the ACH and the bank transfer, but again, talking about reducing your bank fees, you now have the option to pass those through uh, onto your customer, which I think is a great option to have. Not everybody uses it, but it's, it's, it's nice to have there. Um, and if your customers pay you through a portal like this, Paystamp portal or another uh, one of the payment ISVs, it's also, well, I can say this for, for certain with Paystamp, I uh, can't say it for other ones that I haven't used, but when they pay, it's automatically closing out those customer ledger entries as well, right? So not only are you getting the cash, but it's auto applying to the invoice, it's closing out that invoice and your AR clerk doesn't have to go in there and manually apply a bunch of documents, which I think is just uh, absolutely a beautiful process there. All right, we'll get rid of that. That was the, the website, but talking again, kind of wrapping up this AR automation, right? All these are high impact. Uh, the the pay stand one's a little bit more medium effort, we'll call it. Any type of payment portal is going to be, uh, but not to say it's difficult, right? You got to get uh, your, what's it called? Underwriting done and things like that. But from an implementation standpoint, very easy. And then of course, if you ever need to go send an invoice again, We've got an invoice delivery dashboard that you can use to see everything that's been sent, when it was sent, who it was sent by. Uh, you can click into the document to see the uh, exact document that was sent. Again, just the one we already did today. And if you need to resend it again or filter or sort or anything like that, you could simply come up here. Let's go look at that prepayment one. Let's send that one again. Uh, oh, where'd it go? I guess I never sent it. Uh, let's do this. 8,600 <clears throat> should be this guy right here. Should have been for $1,000. There we go. Let's send that. And again, now date time stamped, who sent it. And in a few seconds here, I should have an email. Um, so I see one question that I'll answer all here. Something about a point of sale solution with a credit card terminal. Uh, those are not tools that I've created. Those are just other things that I've used in the past. I would have to check on the credit card terminal uh, just because that's not something I'm as familiar with since we don't have any point of sale internally uh, and none of my clients that are using it do currently, but I can definitely get back to you uh, on that piece. So again, kind of closing the loop here. Boom, you got your prepayment on account and just again, easier ways to send those invoices. And if you're sending statements, you can send statements with the invoice attachments, which I think a lot of uh, people have trouble with in Business Central, right? They're able to send the statement, but what's the biggest question you get when you send the statement? Hey, what invoice? I never got this invoice. How do I pay it? Or, you know, what do I do, right? That's going to alleviate a lot of those pain points. So I'm running short on time. So you I'm going to try to. Uh, can we launch another poll question? This might have yes, been please. the one. I I'm yep. wondering if this is the one that we should have launched first, but you can let me know. Probably, but we'll just see if people are paying attention. Um, which features help notify your system administrator immediately, immediately being the keyword there, record changes in Business Central? We have change logs and field monitoring as the top two answers. Field well, monitoring winning, though. For anybody who hasn't voted yet, I, I would lean with the majority. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm glad nobody answered uh, federally issued GPS enabled ankle monitors. No. But that's no. a different way to track different things. Um, hopefully nobody's had to go through that. Field monitoring is the winner. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. That is the right answer. So good to hear. All right. So going to go through AP very quickly because I know I've only got a little bit of time left. Uh, but how do you know quote to cash automation is for you, right? So here are some signs, right? You're currently have difficulties with your AR and collections. You've got high volumes of invoices. Want to make sure those get to customers, invoices, statements, reminders. Your prepayment booking is very manual or directly posting to AR and understating your accounting there. Um, you can't book multiple prepayments to a single order. Customers are complaining or they want an easier way to pay you and they want to give you their money, but they can't because your process is difficult. You don't have a portal. You have high transaction fees, difficulties applying these payments to the right invoices or the customers, right? All of these things now are going to be alleviated by some of the different tools that we've talked about today. Now, final thing, AP automation, right? I always like to focus more on how we get paid versus paying people, but we got to pay people too. So we'll talk about accounts payable. Similar here, we got a dashboard and we've got the auto emails. Uh, we'll go through those quickly because they're going to look exactly like what they look like on the AR side. High impact, low effort, right? We're going to talk about document storage on the purchase invoices or purchase orders, internal versus external. Again, probably medium impact, again, pretty low effort. Notcha files, right? You know, if we were in a room, I'd say raise your hand if you're using Notcha files, right? There's an easier way to do that. You don't have to export your Notcha files from Business Central and upload them to the bank and anything like that anymore. There's some great tools um, and another ISV um, that we'll highlight today. It's called XE. Uh, they've got a great way to pay vendors directly out of Business Central, right? High impact, medium effort. Again, there's some underwriting there. How to automatically send remittances to your vendors. This was an answer to an earlier poll question where, again, it was kind of a trick question. We we're talking about customers. How do you automatically get those emails to your vendors, right? We'll use the remittances. Uh, we'll talk about how to do those after the fact. Uh, and we're going to jump into again, as you guessed, the live demo. So let's come out here. And just very quickly, I'll just show the dashboard again. I'm not going to show the Excel file because it's going to look exactly the same as the AR one we did, just of course on the, the payment side. But jumping into that same dashboard, we had accounts receivable. I'm just going to come pop over here and click accounts payable. And it's going to load my <clears throat> AP dashboard here. Just give it one second. I haven't looked at it in 24 hours. It's going to run through everything again. All right, boom. Same thing. Buckets, buckets, balances, sort, you know, high, low, not rocket science here. Come in, vendors, you can click them. You know, if you want to see who this vendor is, more information about them, I'm going to click their name, pop up the information. Everything's pretty intuitive. Current, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be your dashboard, which is step one to analyzing your data and getting better with accounts payable. Number two, we're going to talk about <clears throat> document storage. Now, if you only have a select few, if I could spell here, if you only have a select few invoices and attachments and things like that, it might not be a big deal that you're storing them directly in the Business Central database. However, if you have a lot of documents and you're doing a lot of AP automation, and maybe you're already using an AP automation tool, two popular tools I've used lately, and again, these aren't these aren't ours; these are other folks that have created other tools. Continia, it's a great tool. Uh, Corpay, another great tool if you're doing PO matching and OCRing in documents and expense management, things like that. All great tools. But if you just have a very light version, you might just need to, <clears throat> let's come in here, create this vendor. You might just need an attachment, right? So I think I've got a Shopify invoice. I'm going to drag, I'm going to drop, and it's going to store that directly in my user interface. Now, at any time, I can click on that and download it. And it's also automatically storing it in Azure Blob Storage. Now, if you are using the out-of-box Business Central document attachment, uh, you would have to come in here, click this, then click this, and then drag and drop it. So it's just an easier way. And this way it doesn't store it to Azure Blob Storage. By using our document attachment tool, again, it will. That's another uh, little ISV tool that we have there. All right. now. Let's come in here. Let's just create a quick vendor invoice. Again, just kind of going quick. This for the sake of time. What's today's date? We'll do the 5th, 2401. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and post that. And if I look at the posted document, those attachments are also going to flow through, right? I must have installed it twice because it's showing up there twice. But again, you can click it, you can download it. 
and there's my Shopify invoice, right? So you don't need to have the invoices in Business Central and all these documents somewhere else. And now it's hard to find them or go to SharePoint or this, that, and the other, right? You can come directly into Business Central, store your documents, and not have to worry about document storage. Something you know very beautiful about uh, tools like that. Now we got to pay these vendors, right? We put in the invoices. Let's go get these guys paid. One of the things Cynthia talked about was uh, suggest vendor payments, which uh, I can show here. So we'll go to payment journal. And maybe I don't know what needs to be paid, right? Uh, so I can come up to prepare, suggest vendor payments. Uh, I'll just put a date far enough into the future that it'll pick up everything. And then maybe you want to do all vendors. Maybe you want to filter vendors down. Maybe you want to do it by payment code. Okay, great. I can click okay. And I think, again, Cynthia's presentation, keyword there was suggest vendor payments. I don't have to pay all these, right? I can select most of these and not pay them. Let's just select all of these and not pay them. And now I've got 2,000 and 200, both for the same vendor, all the bank account information's filled out. Traditionally, you'd come in here, export the Nacho file, upload it to your bank, send the remittances, kind of manual, probably takes 15 or 20 minutes after it's all said and done and you checks, do your checks and balances, right? I don't have it in this demo uh, instance, but I did want to call it out. And if you have any questions on this, please feel free to call me. Uh, this tool is free, right? They charge by transaction, but to set it up and everything is, is uh, completely free. There's no monthly charge. You can now pay vendors directly, either single currency or multi-currency directly out of Business Central. So let's just imagine that button was right here. You'd click it and it'd go pay all your vendors. Obviously we're in a demo, so we can't do that. And then after it's all done, <clears throat> we're gonna automatically send those vendor remittances. So you're just gonna post it. Do you wanna send the remittances? Yes, and we're off, right? And now all my vendors should have just gotten some emails. Let's go look at that. And I know we had to go through this very fast for the sake of time, but uh, we'll go through the, the PowerPoint here in a second. Just waiting for that remittance to come in here. But while I do that, I'll pop back open the, the PowerPoint and I'll take us home. So what are some signs that the AP automation realm might be for you, right? If you're having difficulties with the existing reports, like we showed, you can absolutely uh, take a look at the AP automation. Um, if you are having, if you've got vendor invoices that are stored externally and are difficult to locate, or you're taking up a lot of document storage, would highly recommend looking at some of these tools. Vendor payment runs are very manual and time consuming. Again, suggest vendor payments is a free out of box tool that you can use in order to do that. And then there's some other tools that you can use in order to pay dir vendors directly out of Business Central. Vendors aren't receiving invoice uh, remittances in a timely manner. Uh, we just saw how they can do that all automatically. And it looks like I actually just got one. So here, you know, please find your vendor remittance for this vendor. And if I click into this, boom, here's the invoice that we just paid you for. Here's the description. Here's the amount, all that kind of good stuff, right? All right, let's keep going. Uh, uploading Nacho files we already talked about and then having trouble applying vendor payments to their invoices, that's all gonna be solved by using those suggest vendor um, payments functions. Now, again, let's wrap it up. What are the key takeaways that I want everybody to take from today, right? We went over an absolute ton of stuff. I had that disclaimer at the beginning, right? We're gonna go fast because there's a lot of good content there, but start simple, right? identify areas for improvement and rank them by importance, right? And typically I would take the most important ones being those low effort, high impact areas, right? Start simple though. Make sure you put your plan together and try to get some of those quick one uh, wins done first. Look at the impact effort matrix, right? And then identify which will have the biggest impact, which will have the lowest effort and start with those quick wins right off the bat. Something else I always put in there, get one, just 1% 1 better every day, right? If you don't have this mentality and you try to tackle it all at once, you will probably give up uh, at some point, right? You'll, it'll become overwhelming. You'll have too much to do. Uh, you know, popular saying Rome wasn't built in a day, right? You don't go to the gym and expect to lose 15 pounds on day one, right? You tell yourself, I'm going to go four days a week over the next six months, then I'm going to lose 15 pounds. And you really typically don't see all of that result until the end, right? And you're likely not going to see the results here until you go live. So there's no get rich quick scheme with, you know, process improvement. It's going to be like compound interest, right? You're going to do it a little bit every every year. Your 7%, you know, when you're 65 is going to hopefully be at a nice sum of money. Uh, it's going to be the same with process improvement. Get a little bit better every day. And kind of with that, 
you know, maximizing your investment doesn't happen overnight, like we talked about. But I hope everybody learned something uh, today. These were again the learning objectives from a CPI, uh, CPE compliance standpoint. Uh, so we'll go through those. We already talked about those. If you need to reach out to me, um, got a few minutes left that we can do Q and A for. Here's my contact information. Email's Ben at erpconnectconsulting.com. Phone number is 214-433-0923. And uh, I think everybody's favorite way to typically reach out to me is my LinkedIn uh, profile. It, my name's pretty generic. So type in Ben Colon ERP Connect and then you'll probably find me. Uh, and you know, feel free to follow, comment on our posts, message me, uh, whatever you need to do. I try to post a lot of educational materials uh, there as well, free of charge, of course. Um, but yeah, really appreciate everybody joining today. And there might be one more poll question. I don't know. Did there we do three is. Already? I'm okay, going to watch go. it right now. What is the best Perfect. way to generate vendor payments for open vendor invoices? And then uh, there's one more question. Does the customer yeah. prepayment functionality also work for vendor payments? It does. Yep. The screens are going to look very similar. Um, and there's just like one extra setup page where you're going to select, do you want to do it at the purchase order level or the vendor level? But all in all, it's going to work pretty much exactly the same. I just highlight customers usually because that's the most popular use case. Right. So we got the top two answers are suggest vendor payments and accounts payable dashboard. Perfect. Well, those are both good answers. I think the best answer is probably to suggest vendor payments if you're trying to generate vendor payments for the open invoices. And then, of course, the accounts payable dashboard is going to be a great way to look at them after the fact. But uh, suggesting the vendor payments is going to be the tried and true way to, to get your vendors paid on time. Some great awesome. questions, well, great interactions. Thank you, Ben. This was so informational. I love yeah, the fun, free really. tools. People should just go out there and get those right now. <laughs> Well, not right now. We have Ab Avalara. Absolutely. After, yeah, the, after our workshop today, go and just vendor payments is free. Check out that health check. It's free. A lot of, a lot of cool things that we showed today that uh, you have at your fingertips that you can just immediately start using. And like we said, focus on those low effort, high impact areas, and you'll start to really see kind of some system improvement from day one.